Hey guys, today we're going to be making our very own DIYs water sensor. Let's get started. What's up guys, it's Drew from Taylor Tech and on this channel we do smart home tech reviews, installations, and DIY guides. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. And hey, at any time, check out the video description down below for show notes and product links for everything mentioned in this video. So yeah, like I mentioned, we are going to be creating our own DIYs, see what I did there? Water detection sensor, I guess you can call it. We are going to be starting off with a simple DI... DIYs. We're going to be starting off with a simple Wise contact sensor and turning it into this or something similar to this. This is just kind of my proof of concept. We're going to make it look a little bit better than this. But this is just a simple Arduino rain sensor module. These can be had for like 10 cents a piece or something if you get them from China. Uh, I'll have a link down below for Amazon, which is where I got them from. I got a pack of three for like five bucks. Or Banggood, which can be had for much cheaper. You just have to wait for shipping. So let's get started. All right, so to start things off, we won't be needing the magnetic part of this anymore because we're going to be removing the reed switch. Next thing you need to do is take off the back cover. There's a little indent here that you can just simply pop open like that. And then we can see the battery. Take that out for now. And finally, we have the small circuit board here. You can see just how small this actually is. Now the only thing holding this circuit board in in is this small plastic bit here which is uh, melted over the top of the circuit board so that's the only thing really holding it in so you need to pop that plastic piece off a little bit and I found the easiest way to do that is just to get the screwdriver under it and twist just a little bit being very careful and just like that it's popped right out all right so we can see that the reed switch is right here on the back and we just need to desolder these two points here and solder our wires into that and that's pretty much it. We don't want to apply a whole lot of heat to the circuit board itself because it is so small and fragile. Shouldn't take long. Just a little bit of heat. Now I'm going to take some scrap uh, jumper cable I had laying around and I'll shorten this up a little bit. Now we do have the plug style in the back of our Arduino board so we can just go ahead and use these uh, plugs here and then we'll cut maybe four inches in and then we'll strip this off and solder this wire straight onto the board. Go ahead and tin the ends of these wires here real quick. And now before I go ahead and solder these onto the board, I'm going to drill holes in the plastic housing here and feed the small end of the wire through the holes rather than cutting, rather than drilling a larger hole like I did the first time. As you can see here, the holes on this are much larger, so I prefer to drill a smaller hole, only the size of this wire rather than this end. So I'll place the board back into the housing just temporarily here so we can get an idea of where we need to mark and drill the holes for the new wire. Alright, so here you can see the size difference between the holes. Much better this time around. So I'll feed these wires through these newly drilled holes. And now I will go ahead and solder these onto the board. All right, now let's go ahead and get rid of this, flip this board around and seat it back into place. All right, now we can put a little hot glue into those holes. I'll probably do that later. Put the battery back in and hopefully our little LED will light up. 
There we go. I don't know if you saw that on camera, but we did get a light there. Back cover should go on without an issue. All right, so this is the three pack of the water sensors that I got off Amazon. I already used one of them, as you saw, and here's another one. It does come with a little circuit board, but we do not need this. I believe this steps up the voltage, or steps down the voltage, rather. And it does also come with its own um, jumper wires, but they're kind of cheapy, and I had better ones laying around, so I just used my own. Okay, so I have the WISE app open as well right now, and I did previously add this contact sensor to my account and it is called test sensor as you can see here and just so you do know if you do set this up if you do wire this up before adding it into your account the reset button is still accessible on the side here just in case you forget to do that first but i would recommend going ahead and setting it up first just probably because it's a little bit easier now we can just connect these wires to the board does not matter which one goes where in this case and moment of truth, I will just use my finger because it is that sensitive. And we can be able to tell by this LED here and from the app. So there we go. Closed and we saw it on the app. I'll lift my finger up, should blink again. There we go. Open. Open, there we go. And I did get a notification, test sensor was closed and open. Now the great part of this is that we can add this with any other smart home functionality through IFT. So I already have this set up with this one, as I will demonstrate. We get our WISE notification first, and then we get our IFT notification that water detected at the water heater, because that's where I'm gonna put this one. So that could also turn on lights, turn on plugs, maybe if it's near a sump pump, turn on a pump, maybe, I don't know. There's all sorts of different options for this. We could have it turn on a wise bulb light, maybe one of the new wise plugs. The list goes on and on what you can do with this. Maybe we'll have an extra video on different things we can do with these sensors. All right, so there we go, our DIYs water sensor. It was really easy, it only took about five, 10 minutes maybe. I can't imagine this being any less reliable than the reed switch inside. And keep in mind, this can be used for other applications other than a water sensor. You can wire this up to a remote reed switch, as you can see here, maybe for a, an industrial type garage door reed switch. So you don't have to apply one of these onto your garage door. The list goes on and on different Arduino boards and things like that that just needs a contact closed could be used in this application. Oh, before I forget, I also did 3D print this holder for these rain sensors here. They just kind of slide in like this and as the rain comes down, it will kind of pool up in there and detect you with a little outlet hole here. I found this on Thingiverse. I'll leave the STL down below if you're interested in that as well. So that's all I had for this video. I hope you found this video helpful. And if you did, I would appreciate it if you would consider supporting me on Patreon. Information for that you can find right there. And subscribing and leaving a like down below is also appreciated. I will see you guys in the next video.